This week on Archery 101, I'm going to show you how I set up a bow. Hey everybody, welcome to Archery 101, Greg here. Alright, I really didn't want to make this video because everybody has their own things and all the experts will tell you you're doing it wrong, you're doing this. My setups work for me. Doesn't mean they're going to work for you. But uh, one guy wrote, he goes, no, please show me so, you know, I can try it. Maybe it will work for me. You know what? Duh, he's right. So this is how I set up my trash bows, right? Now there's two things you have to take into consideration when you're setting up your bow. One is the bow, and two, what you're going to do with it. To me, that determines exactly what I'm going to do with my bow. So we'll start with the bow. This here is a Black Hunter Special Edition from Hitman Archery. I'm going to give this bow a try. That's why I got to set it up. Now, obviously, it's a takedown bow, right? And some aspects of this bow dictates my setup later on. And the riser is diamond wood, which means it's very tough, resistant to breakage. And by having diamond wood, they're able to cut the riser past center, which tells me no archer's paradox and it allows me to use a different range of arrows. But something that they do that I've become a huge fan of is they radius the riser. So it's not straight, it curves on both sides. And I found by having it, it reduces the chance of the arrow slapping the riser because when mine slaps, it's usually in the back. It's not up front, it's in the back where it's getting the impact. And having this cut out makes it a little bit easier. And it also has a radius shelf. Why is that important for me? Well, I don't shoot a normal knock point height. I shoot a much higher one. So my arrows point down, and they usually, if it's a flat one, they're sitting right on that edge. By rounding it over, it gives me just that little bit cleaner release, all right? So that's my bow. So why do I take that into account? Well, it's mainly the cut of the riser. That's going to dictate what arrows I use. It's also going to dictate what I can do. Same thing for the shelf. You know, if it's a flat shelf, getting those higher knock heights can really mess with you. But having this radius one gives me a little bit more leeway. So if you see what I'm trying to say, the bow helps dictate what you're going to do. Now the one thing I'm going to say is with these um, bows cut past center, I don't use a strike plate. I found that, especially with my Stealth Hunter and my other Black Hunter, my arrows are right there in that sweet area and they don't strike my riser at all. So I have no markings, I don't put anything on it. And how I test it is I put a piece of uh, transparent scotch tape on there and it never wore off. So I was telling me it wasn't getting any wear and tear. So that's the first one. But the big one to me is you gotta know what you're gonna use it for. I would set up a target bow very differently than I'd set up a hunting bow. Then I'd set up a 3D archery bow. Then I would set up this bow and that bow. So you got to know how you're going to use it. For me, um, I'm a recreational archer. I do 3D archery primarily. I also go stump shooting. I do muzzy shoots. I just shoot things for fun. Right? So how I set mine up is I know my ranges. And I want mine, how I want it set up is I, I want to be able to sh shoot point on or close to from 15 to 25 yards. Anything in there. That's what I want. And that's what we're going to work on once we get to the range today. All right? That's my goal. We're going to see if we can do it. I've been able to do it with my other two, so I think I should be able to do it with this. All right? So for me, I'm going to try to set this up for point on with a slight crawl to be primarily 20 yards point on. It'll be slightly off at 15 and slightly off at 25, but not by much. And this allows me to draw, not thinking, to shoot instinctively, believe it or not. It's an amazing thing. All right, so there's your first two things when you set up a bow. What is your bow going to do or be able to do? Plungers affect it. Having a rest on it will affect it. The cut will affect it. ILF limbs will affect it. But I'm talking trad bows. I can't do no ILF adjustments. Yes, I could put shims under here. And I could build out the strike plate to push my arrow over, right? But we're not talking about that. I don't like doing those things. I like the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. Put the bow together and I don't touch it. I don't play with it. 
And I can take my bulls, throw them up in the air, let them hit the ground, pick them up, shoot them. Throw them in the water, pick them up, and shoot them. That's what I want. Rugged, simple, and dependable. All right. A lot of bad one, huh? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put on my shelf plate, right? And then I'm going to put on some Velcro right here. It's not mandatory, but I do like it, you know, just in case you do get that string slap or a little bit of vibration, you know, anything to absorb some of that vibration, I think is a good thing. So that's what we're going to do first. Strike plate, sorry, shelf, and padding for my limbs. All right, everybody's done. I uh, strung it up. I don't really sweat brace height a whole lot. Uh, this one right now is at eight and a half. That is the upper limits of it. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't really worry about brace height a whole lot. Um, my whole thing is, as long as the shoots were it's doing what I want, I'm pretty happy. So for, after I do that, I string it up, check my brace height. I shoot some arrows through it. Now I shoot primarily two arrows. I shoot my go tip traditional XT 600 spine and my Carbon Express Predator 2's 800's. But I also have these Easton Access 600's that I want to see maybe how they'll fly. So my first step after I get it all done I just want to see if this is a, a decent brace height noise and vibration wise. Eric put a skinny string on there the knock's going to be probably a little low, but I don't care. That's his knock, by the way. I shoot three under. Now, I know some people will probably say, Greg, the one thing you didn't take into consideration is how do you shoot three under, split finger, or crawl when you set your bow up that way? I don't. I shoot, I shoot all my bows three under. I can shoot them split finger, and they all work fine. You know, like I said, I'm not out here trying to ping X's in a target archer. So I got a little bit more... Leeway. All right, first shot, initial impression, hold. Feels good in the hand. Um, nice and relaxed. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I um, probably heard the tom. I heard a hollow tone noise. Not. No. No hand shock. Just a tad. A bit of vibration. Arrow flew nice and straight. Uh, let's try a predator two. 800 spine. The serving is a wee bit on the thick side. All right, let's see. Ah! <laughs> right next to each other. They both fly really well. Eastern Axis 600s. You know, I'm not even aiming. I'm just drawing and letting her fly. All three look to me like they fly great. No hand shot, a little bit of thump noise. That doesn't really bother me. I might bring the brace down to eight inches and see if that does anything. But right now, that shot pretty good. I'll take you down and I'll show you where they hit. I mean, they're all right next to each other. Incredible. All right, everybody, here we are. First three shots, 20 yards. Bing, bing, bing. All pretty much level. Uh, a little bit more left and right, but it, you know what? That's more me than the arrow, but we can play with it. So what, like I said, we're going to drop the brace down to eight. 
Let's see what happens, and then we're gonna do a, shoot a couple bear shafts. Let's get an idea of what's going on. Okay, drop my brace height down to eight inches. Now, to be honest, I probably could have left it eight and a half and been totally happy with it. But, you know, I just like to see sometimes. And if I'm not happy, I'll just go back to eight and a half. So let's do the, let's try to do the same order. Thick, thick, there it is. Go to traditional 600s with a 145 grain point. And it's still not a bad knock point. Um, easy to draw, easy to hold. Oh yeah, bingo. <laughs> it's so easy to set these things up sometimes. No, I don't, I'm not really aiming, so that's my fine tuning. Yeah, I'm a little off. I don't hear the hollow noise anymore, so it definitely changed the sound. Uh, no vibration. I like it. You know what? I could probably play with it, but it's shooting fine. My, uh, my XT's went dead on. Take it out and show you again. Shoots great. So far, I mean, I have no complaints, but now I'm going to have to play with it and dial it in to see if I can get it to my little 15 to 25s. That's my big one. All right, here we are, the second group, dead on. Uh, a little off, that was probably me. And this one's in center too. So the 600s is fine better, but I'm pretty happy. I, I just might shoot these because I love these arrows, but I'm gonna do one more little thing just to see what's going on a little bit, all right? We're gonna shoot two bear shafts just to see exactly what's going on. All right, everybody, there you have it. So I got that set, but I'm gonna do this one just to see what's going on. I don't think it's gonna change anything, but it'll let me know if they're weak, heavy, but, and it also shows you how much feather's correct. Um, when you do this, you gotta have a good medium to shoot into, something that's solid. You can't have a shot out bag and give you bad readings, but we'll just take it as it is. The backstop I'm shooting that's pretty shot out. <laughs> Don't know how to aim with this. I'm gonna try to shoot a little low. Maybe I'll hit a nice solid area. Let's see what happens. Let's give it a try, shall we? It's perfect. Wunderbar. It was immaculate. It's gonna read knock high. The 800 kicked to the right, <laughs> went down the ridge, and back. <laughs> it was almost horizontal. That was awesome. That was aw that just shows you how much feathers can correct. All right, take you down. I'll show you the. It's the 600s. They work on everything. They're just a fantastic arrow. Right, let's go down and take a look. Alright, so here we are. This actually hit where I want. It's a little knock high. Now this one is actually funny. It's knock level, but it's way. I was aiming at this arrow, and it landed way over there. I'm going to do this one more time. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to show you the flight of that arrow. Alright everybody, let's try that again. Hopefully I'll show you this, the flight of the arrows. Um, go tip first. You know, Kavad on bear shafting. If you don't have really good form, man, you can get bad readings all day long. All right. So when you're doing it and you get a reading that you're all over, it's your form. It's not the arrows. All right, let's try this again. Wow. Dropped, didn't it? You know what? I might have to check. Maybe I don't have the right head on it. Now let's try this one. Did you see that? Boom! boom. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Go tips. 
See how this flies. Pretty dang good. Now watch this. <laughs> they made a left hand turn. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, after that one, I looked at my points on these and I realized my points were heavier. I don't know why I did that, but this is uh, the proper point. So let's see if it goes even more. It should be slightly stiffer now. And let's try the same thing. Get a good setup. <laughs> I just love it. It is so cool to watch that thing kick a left hand turn in mid flight. It's the trad police. All right, let's try the 600 with a 145. Before it had a 175 on it. Dead on. So right there tells me that's all I need. I'm going to use my 600s that I use with my other bows. And it should be flying great. Not getting any marks on my riser, which means I'm not getting any, my arrows aren't hitting my riser at all. Getting a little dirt on my, my shelf, which is just Velcro. So I'm good. Right, we know it. We are good. The arrows are fine. I understand what's going on. My 600s are going to be a little weak, but the feathers will correct that. And my, sorry, my 800s. My 600s are working great. So my bow's ready to go, pretty much. I could go out and shoot it just like this. My next step is to get my point on. I love to know where my point on is, and I want my point on at 20 yards. And I do a couple things to get that, which I'll show you up next. All right, everybody got it set, right? Brace height, eight inches. My knock point I haven't done yet. Uh, this is one that Eric put on there and I'm just using it. Got my shelf. I know my 600s work great. They're flying the best. They are landing knock high, but I shoot knock high. So, this is the big thing for me now. If you shoot instinctive, I still think it's important. It's just a little harder to do. If you gap or if you string walk, it's important. Remember what I said in the beginning, what you plan to do. Well, I like to shoot 3D archery. Most shots are between 25, or sorry, 10 and 30. But I set my bow up for 15 to 25, so I'm pretty much point on. And that's the big thing. When you, when you set your bow up, I like to start from point on and work from there. I don't start back at five, work my way up. I find my point on. And if I'm not happy with it, I adjust it to get it to that range that I want. Then when I got it the range that I want, then I work out the other stuff. You know, if you're hunting, figure out what, you know, what are you going to hunt? 12, 16 yards, right? If that's it. Get your bow set up perfect for there. The rest of it doesn't really matter, all right? Now, if you're doing competition archery, 20 yards is where I'm at, all right? Set it up for 20. So I'm at 20. I always use paper targets because, man, nothing shows variation of form more than that. I'm not going to do a crawl or nothing. I'm just going to do a regular anchor. I'm going to put it right by the yellow. Now, I'm not worried about where they hit. I'm just going to shoot, try to use the same point, and let's see how these babies are flying. And then I can make adjustments from there. I never take the first one or the second one. I always try to take a group. Hmm. But right now, it looks like it's shooting slightly to the right. But that's easy. It could be me. This is interesting with my stealth hunter at 20 yards. I got to crawl down six to eight notches to hit it. But this one without a crawl at 20 yards. Ah, that was me. Dang it. Gosh darn it, Gregory Mark. Should have held proper shot cycle. Hmm. 
yeah, not bad. Interesting. All right, I think I'm set. Gonna do it again. I always do this a few times. Never just take three, four arrows, one group of arrows, one end of arrows. Do it a whole bunch of times before you make any adjustments. All right, so I'll try it again. Good bow. Slightly to the right, huh? But is that the arrow? Or is that me? I, my answers are there, but I'll show you up next what we do to see what's really going on. Not bad. You seen the last one? Picture of the group right there. I mean, come on, it's obnoxiously good. I'll never do that again. But it shows at 20 yards, I'm pretty darn good, right? But was that me? It was the arrows moving over the bow setup. So, best way to find out is what? Move back. So I'm at 25, we're gonna take a shot at 25. I'm gonna take a shot at 30. And that will tell me a little bit better what's going on. Now the problem with how I set my bow up is man, from 30 on out, I'm way over the target. But you know what? How often do I take those shots? So it's a, it's a trade off I'm willing to make. All right, let's try 25 yards. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm set. <clears throat> it's more me than the dang bow. I'll say it's a really sweet shooter. Bad shot. Bad shot. Didn't feel right. You know, the worst part is I can't tell where they're hitting. Should have turned on the downrange. Horrible shot. That was me thinking it. There we go. All right. 2025 pretty much point on. Let's go down and take a look, see where they hit. And then we'll try it again at 30. All right, you can see from 25, look how much it dropped. That was me putting my arrow right about here. Um, dropped low. We'll see about 30, that'll tell me more. But you know, as long as you know it, you can adjust for it. I actually thought I was hitting better, but I guess I wasn't. All right, let's try 30. I'm gonna play around with it. And then we'll give it the final tune-up test. Let's see what it does on some targets. All right, 30 yards. One thing I gotta tell you about using the arrow is you're gonna find out that you like to have your arrow in a certain spot. And I think the reason I shot low is I like to have my arrow, which just naturally goes there, down just underneath the target when it actually needs to be on the target. But that's just me. 30 yards, I'm gonna put it on, hopefully, the yellow, and I bet you it's going to hit probably bottom of the paper. Nope. But it is low. So you can see at 30 yards, my guess is I would have to be um, about six inches above it. There we go, right in there. Yeah. Hey. 
Yeah. Bottom of the paper. See that? All right. The other one I raised it up just to see. Let's do bottom of the in the yellow again. There we go. Yeah. So I can't just relax and draw and shoot. I really gotta focus, which I don't do all the time. All right, let's go down and take a look. Let's analyze what's going on. All right, now here's the interesting part. Like I said, if you don't have a good repeatable shot cycle, you're gonna get in trouble. Low, low, low. There. This one, I kept pulling through the whole thing. I'm not sure if I did on this one, but I think these are probably the better indicative of what's going on. Because if I'm pointing on a 20 at 30, my arrow should be about here. That's just from doing it with all my bows. So that's how that works. So it's, you know, it's there. So I know I'm 20. So 20 be here, 25 be here, 30 is going to be about here. 40, well, yeah, it's going to probably be off frame. But I'm set up, and that's how I set my bow up. Now I'm going to go out and shoot it, because I'm telling you what, shooting a 3D animal is very different than that. And I'll make any fine tunements adjustments after that. See how it shoots, you know. Maybe I just don't like the sight picture, but this bow shoots great. It's quiet to me. I feel nothing when I shoot it. And it seems the arrows are coming out great. And there you have it. That's basically how I set my bows up. It's really quick, simple. It takes me maybe half an hour, 45 minutes max, and I'm good to go. All right? Now, that's one way to set up your trad bow. Now, you know how I do it. You don't have to do it, but if you're like me, it gets the job done. And you can see I can shoot pretty decent groups with it. Farther out I get, the worse I get. Closer on I get, the worse I get. Stay in the same spot, the worse I get. You know how it goes. All right, boys and girls, there you have it. How to set up your trad bow. That's how I set up my trad bow, I should call this video. Pretty simple, I got a bow to shoot. I'm gonna go out and take it on the course and shoot it for a little bit. And then I might make some fine adjustments. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time with an all new episode of Archery, Trad Archery. 101.